Maybe you don't know what a preprocessor is. But if you ever programmed in C or C++, you've most certainly used it, even if you weren't aware of it. You may even have thought that the preprocessor directives were part of the language, but they aren't. So, what are preprocessors? The Wikipedia definition doesn't help much, but think of it like a streaming editor like Seth that knows your language and understands its syntax. It also means that the simpler your syntax is, the easier it is to make a preprocessor for it. This esoteric language with an unspeakable name has a strict but very simple syntax. Making a preprocessor for it took just less than 10k source code or 230 lines. It converts its rather verbal language into simple UBasic. Ford is known to lack syntax. It's got quite a reputation in that regard, and yes, that means it's quite easy to write a preprocessor for it. As we've seen in previous episodes, parsing Ford is dead easy. Every word is delimited by a white space. There are a few so-called parsing words, but there are only a handful of them, and they can easily be handled. In the early day, the 48 compiler didn't support case and case constructs, for the simple reason that I prefer tables instead. But still, I had to support it some way, since sometimes it was needed when people wanted to convert a program that used it. So I wrote a simple preprocessor that could handle those case, of, end of, and end case keywords. In this simple program, those keywords are bold and blue. It prints hello if we feed it to one, by if we feed it to two, and otherwise nothing. The preprocessor breaks the program up in tokens, single words. Most words pass the preprocessor unchanged. But case is called. It sets up a simple variable, but nothing is actually written to the target file. Of is called as well. It increments the variable and writes the equivalent to the target file. End of is simply changed to else. And finally, end case is changed to drop. And then as many dents are written as are indicated by the variable. And that's it. And yes, it works as intended. That's why you never see the preprocessor. If it does its job well, it's virtually transparent. Now, let's take a look at this program. Most words that go through this program are parsing words. A lot of them have to do with strings in some way. The case words are just a tiny minority of all the words processed. It would be quite easy to add new words to the structure. All you need is an entry in this table consisting of the keyword concerned and an execution pointer to the word that handles it. So, yes, once I added floating point support, I needed something to support ANS words like F variable. The point is, floating point was provided for in the form of a library. It's not part of the 48 score. 
Therefore, allocating space for floating point numbers couldn't be part of the core as well. Unless I didn't mind the very inconsistent and murky design. Which I did mind, if you don't mind. But a preprocessor? Why not? An F variable can hold a single floating point number. The size of the floating point number in cells is represented by the constant float. Since a floating point number consists of several cells, we need to define an array and give that array the same name as the original floating point number. The nitty gritty details of setting and retrieving the number are left to ffetch and fstore, job done. But that is nothing in comparison with fconstant. A variable was only about allocation. But in order to support this monster, we have to convert the value, because 40h is not going to recognize it. Allocate the variable, put the value into that variable, and finally automatically retrieve that value at runtime. That's one tall order. So first we have to tackle that number. For that we need something to mark this value as a floating point value, and that will be f%. f% will parse the value, slam it between quotes, and convert the resulting string to a floating point value. Then we allocate some space for that floating point value, much like we did with a variable. Fortunately, 48 supports a world called latest, which always refers to the last definition, in this case inch to centimeter. So we can use that one to initialize the variable. And finally, we can create a DAS definition to define the behavior of the variable at runtime. In this case, to fetch its floating point value. Wow, we're done. We did it. And if we can do this, there's a lot more we can do. Like supporting the new Ford 2012 parsing words, like synonym, action of, begin structure, end structure, whatever that illustrious committee can come up with. But every time we want to support another word, we have to change the source. Well, that's not optimal. But you'll have to wait for the next episode to see if we have a solution for that. So, I'm Hans Bezemer, and this was another episode of Back and Forth. Woo!